Okay, so here's the list of items we'll need. A computer with a serial port, or you can get a serial adapter. An Omnigo 100 or 120, either one works fine. An Apple IIc, oh wait, no, we don't need that. Uh, but we are also going to need a serial cable. It's a very special one that HP released. You can see this unusual connector that connects to the Omnigo. Uh, not sure why they made it so non-standard except to force you to buy it, bastards. But you can always make up your own cable if you don't want to buy one of these. And that's it. Now, spoiler alert, I'm not the first person to expose an Omnigo to DOS. Obviously, people were doing this back in the day, back when these Omnigos were still popular and relevant. But for whatever reason, it still didn't take off. So we're going to find out why. But let's see what the next step in this process is first. So here is Geos on the Omnigo. It's your standard GUI. I have just about every software ever made for the Omnigo, which all fits on a single four megabyte RAM card, which just goes to show how little was produced. Let me just run some software to demonstrate it. Here's some Tetris. You can use the keyboard to input your commands or the touch screen. Either way works fine. Uh, but yeah, it's your standard Tetris. Groovy. But what you can also do with this machine is rotate it and it actually adjusts the screen. It you know, changes the orientation so you can fold the keyboard back and hold it in your hand as a tablet device. So that was pretty innovative for the time, I think. And as you can see, it has handwriting recognition capabilities as well. But we don't want to look at that stuff right now. We want to run some DOS programs. And so what I'm going to do is access the transfer application and set my baud rate. And I'll just set it for the max that the Omnigo can handle. And connect. And now it's just waiting for input from the PC side. From the PC side, you're going to launch a client called Omnicom which is going to connect to the Omnigo. It uses a command line interface, so for you DOS lovers, you'll probably be right at home. So just follow the instructions, enter the serial ports, your baud rate. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with baud, uh, that is the speed of the file transfer, which is, I think, bits per second. Uh, it's very, very slow, that's what I know. It takes like 10 minutes to download Prince of Persia. Uh, that's why I don't recommend sending files this way unless you absolutely have to. Uh, but what we're going to do here is access a specific file on the Omnigo that would normally not be accessible. That file is the auto execution batch file, which basically tells the Omnigo what to do when you turn it on, and it tells it to start Geos automatically. We're going to tell it two things. Don't start Geos. Instead, run a DOS mode driver to reveal DOS. So let me just do a question mark so you can see the list of the commands. And I'll just switch over to the root folder and do a listing. And there's the file in question. So I'm going to get the file. Auto execution. And it's uploaded. And there it is. And so uh, now I'm going to edit that batch file. And there you can see right there, the last line says Geos, we want to remove that. And instead, we want to put in whatever DOS mode driver we're going to use. I'm going to use one called Omni SWP, Omni Swap, I don't know, however you pronounce it. And I'll go ahead and just remove this uh, directory command as well. So it opens in the root directory and click save. And we're done with that. Now I'm going to replace it. So I'm going to remove the existing version. And I'm going to place in the modified version. And the last step here is to put the DOS mode driver in the root directory. OmniSwap. And once that's in place, there you go. We are in business. So now when I do a soft reset on the Omnigo, it will start in DOS mode. 
So the next step is to load in some games and try this thing out. All right, so I'm ready to enter into DOS. So I'm just going to reboot the machine using the shift, on, and next buttons all at the same time. And it should enter right into DOS. And we're in. So now you can just type in your standard DOS commands. Works just fine. Let me go ahead and switch over to my E drive, which is the CF card, and access my games directory. So I just put in a couple benchmark games, test this thing out, and see how it looks. Let's start with Frogger. All right, so this is an 80 column display driver, so I can actually scroll over so you can see the whole screen. A little quirky, but just center in on your character and try to cross the street. Jeez, easier said than done. Damn. Did we make it to the halfway point? Ridiculous. All right, next is Thexter. One of my favorite games of all time. Let's see how it runs on the Omnigo. What does it say? Do you have a joystick? No. Oh yeah. Moonlight Sonata. There he is, Dexter. Groovy. All right, let's play on one more. Play some Alley Cat. Whoa! That is Alley Cat on a machine running at 16 megahertz. And I'm definitely playing beginner level here. Oh, damn. Can't even see when the window's open. Well, in conclusion, I can kind of see why they didn't advertise this as DOS compatible. I mean, it plays the software, but it's just really small and plays really fast. So there you have it. The Omnigo running DOS. Thanks for watching.